having a strong circadian rhythm is literally foundational to helping optimize every task that your body runs on a minute by minute, second by second to day to day basis. So here's why, like why can our circadian, why is our circadian rhythm so important? Well, we have to have optimum timing, right? The body is such a complex organism and not just us. We're not the only things with circadian rhythms, right? Plants have circadian rhythms. Animals have circadian rhythms. Insects have circadian rhythms. And so why do, why do we need this rhythm that we to experience our day? Well, think about what, what would happen if we try to run every task all the time right? That, that's not needed, right? That's not needed. So what's happened over the course of millennia is that the body has started to prioritize optimizing certain tasks at certain times of the day. So I don't like, for example, why would I need to have full blown digestive function in the middle of the night, right? That just doesn't make sense for me to need to maintain high levels of stomach acid uh, well into the night when uh, my likelihood of finding, gathering, hunting, encountering food would have been rather low. And so from a really broad perspective, we actually have synced up a lot of important processes based on light timing or darkness. Similarly, why would I need to repair my tissue? Why would my body, why would I want to repair my tissue to go into the deep tissue repair if I was still metabolically active in that tissue? My muscles, for example. And so we've, we've um, you know, basically optimized when to do things based on light signaling and, and or darkness signaling, signaling to um, optimize when it makes sense to accomplish that task in the human body. Uh, one of the ways that we can look at this is we've got bowel movements that are suppressed at night because of darkness, whereas bowel movements are likely at around 830 in the morning. That coincides, believe it or not, with UVA rise, which I talk about in, with gut motility in a, in a separate newsletter video. Um, but that being said, like, so, so we basically have this, this clock, right? This, this ongoing clock mechanism in my body. And my body has decided that it needs to do certain things based on the time of day. And so there's the primary way that we can start to sync this circadian signaling is by understanding how light interacts with our eyes and then the clock in our brain. So deep in our brain, in our hypothalamus, we've got an area called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. That's just a fancy way of saying that our central clock in our brain or our timekeeper for our whole entire body. And so that time is being informed by the light entering my eyes. And it's not just any light entering my eyes. The, that particular time it, timing mechanism is being keyed in on the amount and intensity of blue light in my environment. So picture about you know going from a period of darkness to a period where the sun starts to rise higher and higher in the sky till it reaches its high point and then it starts to go away, go away, go away until there's another period of darkness. The amount and intensity of blue light goes from very little to increasing more and more and more and more and more till a maximum amount of, of intensity and the amount of blue light at that solar noon when the sun's at the high point in the sky. And then it goes away, goes away, goes away, goes away, goes away until I've got a period of darkness that I would call nighttime. And so the blue wavelength of light was the perfect wavelength to key in on to tell time because it literally changes predictably and minutely from increasing the amount and then decreasing the amount. So it's a great wavelength. If I can interpret it, it was a great, great wavelength range that I could use to tell time of day. And so that's exactly what happened. I have these melanopsin receptors or blue light sensors in the backs of my eyes that are continually picking up this, the presence of this blue light and um, a, basically transmitting that as a time of day to my brain. There's a direct connection between those sensors that sit in my eye and my brain, uh, that hypothalamus where that clock sits. It's called the retinal hypothalamic tract. And so I capture the blue light that gets communicated directly as a time of day to that suprachiasmatic nucleus. And that clock in my brain vibrates or oscillates based on the time of day to help tell time. And uh, I don't speak a ton, or maybe I have, I speak a lot about this in my private community, but vibration is a language that everything understands, right? Um, and so the, the change in the, the intensity of the oscillation actually um, is what impacts when certain genes get turned on and turned off. The body knows how to interpret those, those changes in that oscillation and that vibration as different times of the day. So then all of a sudden my body says, oh, okay, now it's morning, let's uh, make sure these genes are expressed. Okay, now it's nighttime, let's make sure these genes are expressed. Let's make sure we make more of these proteins and less of these proteins. And everything can get organized based on that light signaling. 
Now, we do also need a period of darkness because it's in a period of darkness that we run so many uh, programs, repair programs that need that darkness signal in order to become optimized. So darkness is a key signal at night to make sure we key in on as well. It's part of the whole circadian rhythm. So we've got this, these periods, you know, day in and day out where we're helping to determine our circadian rhythm and the cells are keying in on that oscillation, that vibration of the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is keeping time. Now, there's also secondary things that come into play here. So as, the, as my body starts to perceive, because the light entering my eyes is telling it so, as my body starts to perceive that the day is starting, that actually kickstarts a whole bunch of cascades that initiate in the brain in that exact same region of the hypothalamus called the hypothalamus. Um, and so I have a lot of cascades that initiate that, that kick off between the hypothalamus and the pituitary two glands in the brain that then can signal to the adrenal glands to start to elevate cortisol. That cortisol entering the bloodstream and having a beautiful rise in the morning, that's another signal that my, all the cells in my body can key in on to know that it's morning time of day. And as that cortisol starts to wane, that corresponds with the day um, ending. Conversely, then, as the as uh, darkness is approaching and I start to make more and more melatonin, that gets put into the bloodstream as well. And that's a, my, my body is another way that my body and my cells can know what time of night it is, right, based on the melatonin. And so that's another signal, again, keying in on light. We also have um, other hypothalamic pituitary cascades that are really important and need to be optimized with light. That includes the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. Not all organs need, meta, need to be very metabolically active at all times of the day and night. So based on the light signaling and the time of day, my thyroid gland gets to help support metabolic activity in my various organs in a very appropriate way. We also have connections between the hypothalamic pituitary and reproductive organs, the ovaries, the testes, right? So this has ramifications in optimizing the hormones of fertility. Um, we've got a connections between the hypothalamic pituitary pancreatic axis. That axis right there is one that can help to optimize digestive function. Um, we also have th this pathway intersects with the autonomic nervous system. It intersects with the parathyroid glands. I mean, there's so much that's been studied in terms of how these all interconnect. And literally this research, you know, this the particular research that I'm um, referring to that I'm thinking of in this instance was done in 1934. So it's not like this is <laughs> new, brand new stuff. It's just that our lifestyles have divorced us so much from the natural day-night signaling uh, that we we're seeing a really big epidemic of circadian rhythm dysfunction. And so um, this is why I think light is so fundamental because of how it literally communicates to all the cells in my body to optimize all different pathways, at least some of the most important pathways possible. And when we have when we see circadian rhythm dysfunction now um, being studied in the literature, and there's a robust amount of literature looking at circadian rhythm dysfunction, we see how the circadian rhythm dysfunction can disrupt gut health. It can alter gut motility. It can um, lead to inflammatory bowel disease. It can change the gut microbiome to be more pathological. It can lead to leaky gut or intestinal permeability. It's related to depression. It's related to anxiety. It's related to, to I mean, it's not even related. There's, there's some causative ways that it could be driving cancer. Um, we see um, uh, challenges with circadian rhythm and chronic pain. Um, all aspects of mitochondrial dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction is seen in so many um, dis states of dis-ease these days from neurodegenerative diseases to autoimmune diseases to fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. I mean, we this is how intimately connected we are to our light environment. And when we disconnect so drastically from optimizing those signals, this is why so many different pathologies and symptoms of dis-ease can arise. And so if we can start to optimize our light environment and our relationship with light, both through light that enters the eyes, but also light that touches the skin, it goes a long way towards setting a beautiful foundation for optimum and thriving health.